In February of 2018, Princess Shamsa, one of the most privileged women in Dubai, had to escape the country in hopes that she could get to a place where she can live a free life. But little did she know that wouldn't happen. There was no country in the world where she'd be safe. She was a princess, and princesses don't just get to decide when they stop wanting to be a member of the royal family. But she tried it anyway, and had to pay the price. The price being her life. In this video, we're going to dig deeper into the dark side of being a princess in the Middle East, and the price they have to pay just because they were born into the royal family. Princess Shamsa never had it easy. Born to Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum, she was officially the daughter of the ruler of Dubai, which meant that eyes were always on her, no matter what she'd do. And while most people would love the attention, Shamsa hated it. All she wanted was to go to the UK and get a degree from Cambridge. The crazy part was that she had the money and the brains for it. It took her one try to get in, but when she brought it up to her father, it was a hard no. The sheik wouldn't allow it. The princess was to remain in the palace in Dubai and forget about her dreams of studying abroad. But that's not the life she wanted for herself. So she did what any princess would do, took matters into her own hands. In August of 2000, she grabbed the keys of one of her father's Range Rovers and with it, drove directly to the airport. From there, she took a flight to London and thought that she could fulfill her dream of going to Cambridge. But that didn't end up happening. Within the next few weeks, Shamsa was kidnapped in broad daylight off the streets of Cambridge. From there, she was first taken to Paris and then on a private jet back to Dubai, where her father wanted her to be. You'd think that the man just wanted his daughter home, but no, he wanted her back to punish her. So instead of letting her move back into the palace she used to live in before, he had her locked up in a prison. Shamsa spent the next eight years locked up in isolation, heavily drugged and beaten. When she was released, it was as if she were just a shell of her former self, nothing like the ambitious young woman who wanted to go to Cambridge. What's worse is that her sister, Princess Latifa, also fled the country a few years later, only to be forced back the same way. It's taken her close to a decade to escape from her father's grasp, but even today she's living in the UK on borrowed time. At any point, the Sheik could decide to bring her back, and she'll suffer the same fate her sister did, who the world has now not seen for 22 years, just because she dared to dream and to try to get away. You'd think that Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al-Maktoum's behavior with his daughters was just because they wanted to try to run away from him. But Princess Latifa calls him evil. Evil men don't just keep their evils limited to their children. It extends to other people in their life too, especially their wives. For Haya bint Hussein, it was something she had to experience throughout her life. Haya was born a princess. Her father was King Hussein of Jordan, one of the most influential men in the Middle East. When Haya was in her late teens, she fell in love with one of the commanders in the Jordanian army. But right before they were going to make things official, he passed away in a mysterious accident. No one said it out loud, but it was obvious that the king had something to do with it. You see, princesses aren't just regular women, they're valuable. They have the ability to bring in new alliances, strengthen the country as a whole. So the king couldn't just let his daughter fraternize with the military men of his country. He had much bigger plans for her. He wanted her to live in the palaces in Dubai as the wife of one of the most influential men in the country, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And he made it happen. Haya was his second wife, but their marriage didn't last very long. The pair had a 25 year age gap and their pairing was always an alliance, never really a marriage. After seeing how callously the Sheik treated Princesses Shamsa and Latifa, Princess Hayed knew she had to save herself. She had to get out of Dubai if she was going to have a long life. So she grabbed both of her children, fled to the UK, and ended up filing for divorce. Everyone thought that there was no way the Sheik would let her go, but he did. Not only did he let her go, but he also let her have sole custody of their children. What's even crazier is that Princess Haya was a victim of domestic abuse too. So she has seen firsthand how angry the Sheik can get, so she'd know exactly how bad things can get. But even then, she was able to make her way out of it, like it was a totally normal relationship. 
While Princess Haya was able to walk away from a marriage she no longer wanted to be a part of, Princess Zainab Javadli didn't get the same freedom. In September of 2020, a video of her crying and pleading for help surfaced on Instagram, and it made it clear that the hardships the princesses had to face at the hands of the sheiks was not in the past. It was still happening, and it was happening to Zainab, and no one could help her. Zainab Javadli was one of Azerbaijan's most decorated athletes. She was a figure skater and gathered medal after medal throughout her skating career. In 2015, she met Sheikh Saeed bin Maktoum bin Rashid al Maktoum. The prince was an athlete himself, and despite their 15 year age gap, they fell in love. And in 2015, Zainab married the Sheikh. She became his third wife, and had thought that since her husband was a billionaire and she'd barely have contact with the other wives, she'd be able to cope with it all. For the next couple of years, that's what seemed to be happening. The pair had three beautiful daughters together and seemed happy at the public gatherings. But then, suddenly, news came out that Zainab had moved out of the palace into a private villa and was seeking divorce from her husband. The sheik wasn't going to let her go easily. In fact, he dragged her entire family into it too. In a video St. Ab had posted online, she was crying, asking for anyone to help her get her family away from the Sheik. But no one's influential enough to step in. Not the police, not the other authorities, no one at all. It's been over two years since anyone has heard from the former princess or her family. No one knows whether she was able to save her family or not, or she was too made to disappear, just like other princesses had before her. To the world, the last images of Zainab are of her pleading to the world for help, with no word on whether that help ever got to her. There have been princesses treated horribly by the sheiks, but no one comes close to the treatment Sheikh Randa had to face throughout her life at the hands of her ex-husband, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Maktoum. Randa met the sheikh in Beirut when she was just 16 years old. In awe by his presence, the teen was immediately head over heels in love with him and agreed to marry him, becoming his first wife only a few months after their meeting. At 18 years old, Randa gave birth to the pair's only daughter together, Manal. But shortly after the child's birth, their relationship fell apart. Randa had uncovered something the sheik had done, and she no longer wanted to stay with him. Some say he had cheated, Others say she found out something much worse. But regardless of what it was, he allowed her to leave, but told her that Manal had to stay behind. At first, she thought that she'd later be able to meet her and maybe even get custody, but that didn't happen. In fact, the last time Miranda, who's in her late 60s now, had seen her daughter was when she was five months old and could barely hold her neck up to crawl. Throughout her life, she kept trying to meet her daughter but the sheik made it so that she wouldn't be able to. The only time she had come close was when he allowed her to enter an event she'd been at, but told her to find Manal with your mother's intuition. The crowd had thousands of women, and Randa wasn't able to find her daughter. That's the agony she's had to live with her whole life, searching endlessly for her daughter, never even able to look at a picture of her. All because she decided to break things off with the sheik not knowing that he would make it his life's purpose to make her life a living hell. When Randa, Zainab, and Haya married into the royal family, they thought that their dreams would come true, but later realized that their lives were no different than the princesses who were born into the family. The dark side of being a princess in the Middle East is the same, regardless of how you become a princess. If you dare to speak against the sheiks in power, you'll either disappear or wish you did so you wouldn't have to suffer at their hands any longer.